Quarter four, 2023, here we go. I don't know about you, but that just seems mind blowing. Where has all the time gone? I always panic around this time of year and worry about all the things I haven't done yet. All the goals I haven't achieved, all the trips I haven't taken, the dogs I haven't pet. The quarter four overwhelm is real. So one of the topics that keeps resurfacing on my channel this year is goals. How to set them, how to achieve them, when you should let a goal go. Lately, I've been realizing that so many of the goals I originally set for this year simply no longer align with who I want to be as an artist and honestly, who I want to be as a person. My art journey is very intertwined with my life as a whole, and the more I grow as a person, the more I change as an artist. As of right now, I have five more pieces to create for my 20 illustrations challenge before the end of the year. Now that doesn't really sound like that much. <laughs> I have a quarter of the challenge left for the final quarter of the year. But combining that work with putting out a new YouTube video every other week, writing my email newsletter on the off weeks, creating a Maricky Monday sketch each week, posting and marketing on social media, and the other art projects that I've been working on, it's, it's a lot. <laughs> And truthfully, I was feeling pretty discouraged when I realized that I would just barely finish my 20 illustrations challenge by the end of the year if and only if I take zero time off. No holidays, no sick days, nothing. Now I'm sure my fellow chronically ill artists out there are scoffing and laughing at me right now because y'all know I've probably got at least another couple of sick weeks waiting for me before the year is over. So after that discouraging and overwhelming look at the calendar and realizing that maybe I'm overestimating my capabilities a bit, I took a step back. I took a deep breath and I realized that if I want to finish out the year well and achieve some of my goals, I needed to make some changes. So I looked back on the year and realized that my priorities have changed a lot. I have a couple of very big new priorities too that are much more important to me than some of the goals I originally set out to achieve this year, but I'll talk about those in a minute. So I thought about what's really important to me. And if you've been feeling overwhelmed like me, maybe you need to do the same. Y'all know I'm a huge fan of lists. So here's a list of seven handy dandy steps to refocusing and finishing out the year well. Number one, take a step back. Seriously, a physical step back. Put down the calendar and the to-do list, set aside the super daunting goal spreadsheet, and walk away for a minute. If you got a few minutes and the weather's nice, maybe take a walk outside. I'm sure we could all use a healthy dose of vitamin nature. You can come back to the video when you're done. Number two, take a deep breath. Chances are your heart's been pumping a little bit faster while you're thinking about the end of the year time crunch. Just take a deep breath and simply be for a moment. If you went outside, maybe think about the birds you heard or the colors of the autumn leaves. It's really hard to get any sense of clarity if there are a million thoughts screaming for attention in your mind. And simply breathing for a minute can help you slow your roll. Number three, get those thoughts out. Now this is particularly important for visual people like me. Grab a piece of paper and a pen, set a timer for five minutes and write literally everything that comes to your mind. And I do mean everything. If you're thinking about lunch, then write down your lunch order. If you had a weird dream last night, write it down. Maybe you have a friend you keep meaning to call and keep forgetting to. Write that down too. Let it be absolute word vomit on the page. And if five minutes goes by too fast and you wanna keep writing, just do it. A brain dump journal session can be such an amazing outlet of relief when you're feeling overwhelmed. Number four, Remember that you are not behind. Life doesn't stop simply because we have goals we want to achieve. Life is still going on around you. Your kids and your pets still need to be fed. You still need to go grocery shopping. The laundry probably needs to be folded. And those are just the everyday things. The unexpected life things still happen occasionally too, like the washing machine breaking down or the electricity going out or an unexpected diagnosis for a family member. Conditions are never going to be perfect for you to achieve your goals. Recognizing that life stuff gets in the way sometimes and learning to be okay with that is a really important step. Number five, learn from the life things. Think back on what's come up this year that was hard for you to deal with and recognize that it was hard to deal with. I think we all need to have a little bit more grace on ourselves. 
But don't look at those life things as a black and white, well, this was just bad kind of situation. I don't know what your beliefs are, but I personally believe in a sovereign God who uses both the good and the bad in life for a purpose, for his glory and for my good. I'm learning this year that the hard things are what help you grow as a person and as an artist. The challenging paintings you work through or the argument you have with a friend. Character growth and artistic growth never come from what's easy. So I shared last December that I lost my furry best friend of almost 15 years, little Ella May. And I'm not gonna lie, that's been incredibly hard for me to deal with. But as I look back over the last 10 months or so, I can see that little pieces of good have grown from that too. It's taught me not to take my work so seriously. It's taught me that it's okay to take breaks to be with the people and the pets that you love because they're not always going to be around. It's been a really hard situation, but I think it's also helped me to grow in kindness. Number six, be grateful for what you've already achieved this year and for the amazing, unexpected life surprises. Think of five things right now. I'm not even joking. Take a moment and either physically write them down or mentally list them out. Gratefulness is a wonderful antidote for fear and discouragement. I'll share mine. Number one, we adopted a little rescue dog last week. Meet Annie Jane. Annie Jane. Say hello! She has been such an incredible blessing to my family and I. She's been absolutely glued to my side. Seriously, I can't even go to the bathroom without her. <laughs> you know, learning from losing Ella makes me really appreciate the time that I get to spend with Annie Jane even more. I'm more willing to take a break from work to snuggle. I'm learning to not be so obsessive about productivity. That rest is important too that simply spending time with your loved ones is more valuable than your career. Obviously, we still gotta make a living, but not at the expense of those around you. Number two on my grateful list, there's a new frozen yogurt shop in my town. Y'all know, ice cream, frozen yogurt, frozen custard, that's, that's my jam. And let me tell you, they have the best peaches and cream frozen yogurt, hands down. Number three, I am going to be an aunt. Let me tell you, I was built to be an aunt. Motherhood, not for me, but semi-responsible, fun aunt, that's the life for me. And it's been requested that the baby has a Bits and Bobbles themed nursery, which of course I'm not at all excited about. No Pinterest nursery inspiration boards have been made or Amazon wish lists. But I have grudgingly obliged. Just kidding, I am so freaking excited. Be prepared for nursery decor overload. I am so excited to show you guys the plans I have for this Bits and Bottles nursery. I wanna show you guys what I'm making. Number four, I launched my website and online shop this year. Now I tend to have a very, well, I didn't immediately understand this, so I'm giving up now, kind of mentality when it comes to technology. <laughs> so this was a really big deal for me. And with that website launch, I also got my first international sale, which was insanely exciting. And if you want to check out the website and shop, there's a link down in the description. Number five, this one's a little bit silly, but I love silly things. So every year we buy gourds to decorate our porch with for autumn, but apparently last year's gourds sprouted and we ended up with about 25 homegrown gourds this year, two of which keep me company on my desk. Wow. So that's my little list of gratefulness and I'd love to hear yours down in the comments. And now for the seventh and final tip, reprioritize. So when I was in preschool, I loved the cutting. Anything that involved scissors, I was a big, big fan of. Cutting paper was my jam and I was darn good at it too. I think the most important step of refocusing is the cutting. <laughs> First, let's take a look at the brain dump list you made. And if you cheated and didn't do the homework, it's okay, you still have time. Go do it real quick and come back to this step. So take a look at the brain dump and cross off or cut out everything that's not important. The weird dream you had, cross it off. What you ate for supper yesterday, unnecessary information. <laughs> but all those little things and tasks like calling a friend or visiting a new museum, circle those ones and rank them in order of importance. And if you have more than five, cross off everything that's ranked under the fifth spot. I know that's hard sometimes, but if it wasn't important enough to make the top five, then it's probably not important enough for you to do right away. Now let's take a look at the goals you made at the beginning of the year and cut out the ones that no longer align with who you wanna be or where you wanna go in life. Maybe you set a goal to run 100 miles this year and realized after mile 24 that you really hate running. 
Or maybe you set a goal to paint five sketchbook spreads with gouache and realize that you just want to use alcohol markers instead. Let go of what doesn't really align anymore and prioritize what does. So one of the things I'm learning about goals this year is that they aren't set in stone. Sometimes they're simply a jumping off point. Sometimes they're a direction for you to go in that shows you that that isn't the direction you want to go in, <laughs> if that makes sense. This 20 illustrations challenge is extremely important to me. It's just as important, if not more so, as the 100 scene studies challenge was last year. This is a goal I'm focusing on and reprioritizing. It's in the number one spot. One of the other goals I originally set for this year was to go to Lightbox Expo this fall, and it's just not financially feasible at the moment, or honestly really a good time for me to travel. Like I said, I have Annie Jane now, and we're still working on getting settled in. We're adjusting to a new routine, and a trip like that, even though it'd only be for a couple of days, just didn't really work out for this year. I started a little mini goal a few months ago to do a bits and bobbles sketch every Monday in this little sketchbook. It's given me a simple goal that keeps me accountable and helps me learn more about Bits and Bobbles' story, and it's just a really fun, low-pressure, creative project. Now this is a goal I've kept up with and fully intend to keep up with. Once again, I'm prioritizing this goal instead of some of the others that just no longer align with my art journey. I had also intended to do my email newsletter weekly, and ultimately decided to reduce it to the weeks that I don't post a YouTube video in an effort to make more time for painting. So really looking at my goals and reprioritizing what's most important to me has helped relieve a lot of that final quarter stress. It's given me a solid sense of direction and a smaller list of goals that are both achievable and are what I actually want to achieve. Getting rid of goals can pave the way to actually achieving the other ones. It is so, so necessary to cut out goals or shift them in the right direction. It's been so interesting to see how the 20 illustrations challenge has evolved for me this year. It started out with simply following the theme prompt, but as the story of the Meraki Meadow has come to the forefront of my imagination, it's transformed the challenge into something new. I explored more of the scenery of the meadow and the characters and their jobs and their lives. Same goes for the Meraki Monday sketches. And each of these paintings and sketches impacts my own life too. So seeing those little life things like eating breakfast while watching cartoons, or visiting the library, or going grocery shopping, seeing these what could be mundane things turned into something just a little bit magical makes me really appreciate those things in my own life even more. In a lot of ways, this has been a very, very hard year for me. It's been a year of grief and stress and change, but it's also been one of growth and good. And each of these paintings and sketches helps me learn a little bit more to see the good in my own life, even when it's not easy. So let's take a minute to talk about these paintings. These paintings for me are kind of a symbol of peace and tranquility, and I thought they'd be a good addition to this topic. They're a picture of sitting and enjoying rather than running and stressing. So I tend to freak out a little bit about painting skies, so having an entire theme dedicated to skies was fairly daunting but I knew for sure I wanted to paint some clouds. Clouds are the most challenging part for me when painting skies, and I really wanted to embrace that challenge and try to learn from it. Now, I'm sure you've noticed that there are, in fact, two paintings in this video. So there's a really cute gravel road near my house that my dad and I like to take walks on together. There's two large cornfields on both sides of the road, and when the sun starts to set over the top of the corn, it's just really beautiful. Nothing super exciting, but beautiful all the same. So I'd been wanting to paint that scene for a while, but just hadn't taken the time to do it. I had thought about painting it for the sky theme, but thought that maybe that might be a bit too boring. <laughs> Which is dumb, I know. If I enjoy painting it, then why should it matter what anyone else thinks? Once again, me getting in my own head. Anywho, I realized though that there was nothing stopping me from still doing the painting. <laughs> I had a few pages left in my scene study sketchbook, so I whipped out my paints one afternoon and had a very peaceful painting session. It was so nice to paint without any real purpose for it. The only purpose was having fun. It also helped me get a little bit more comfortable with painting clouds, which definitely didn't hurt. So then I started on the actual illustration for the sky theme. I knew for sure I wanted bits and bobbles and a sunset, but it took a few different thumbnail sketches to finally decide on the sitting on top of a telephone pole idea. Now I didn't make a color key for this one, just a little board of references on Pinterest for kind of a rough idea, and just explored with paint. It was wonderful. 
Once again, I just had a lot of fun. I exaggerated the cooler tones on the shadow side of the telephone pole and played around with painting growing vines. I added little sun rays between bits and bubbles for added pizzazz. And of course, the little Dottie's body bits. It was such a fun painting process and I'm so happy with how it turned out. So if you've been stressing about the rapidly approaching end of the year, I hope this video helped you to take a breather and remember that it's okay to go in a different direction. The end of the year doesn't have to be a race to the finish. You can let go of things and still finish the year well. To let go of one goal for the sake of another. To be grateful for what has happened this year instead of being discouraged over what hasn't. Thank you guys so much for watching and huge thank you to the Cozy Club over on Patreon for sponsoring this video. You guys are so encouraging and I am so, so thankful for each and every one of you. If you want another cozy video like this one, you can check out this video where we do some sculpting and painting and chat about the importance of making easy art. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you soon. Bye guys.